So today is the 18th of September. You've all screenshotted the article. You've trimmed it down so that we've got lots of space. And you're going to pop that first image you've got. And your, your images may line up a little bit differently than mine. That's OK. But you're going to pop that into Doceri. And make sure that you're not taking up more than half of your screen. So you want to leave lots of space over on the side, because that's where you're going to do your annotation. What I'm going to do, and I want you, oh, I forgot to give you a paper copy of the annotation guidelines. Let me do that. OK, so the first step in doing this annotation is actually pre-reading. And when we pre-read, and I'm going to pop in the image of, of the annotation guidelines. When we pre-read, we literally just kind of read through it. Now, just like I talked about with that chapter in my entomology book, just like maybe with some of the science journal articles that we're going to use in here, you may read a paragraph in which there are a bunch of words you don't know. That's OK, because you're going to end up looking them up. So go ahead and pre-read that quietly to yourself. Once you've kind of skimmed that, some words may pop out to you, and there may be words that you're not familiar with. There may also be words that you know you've heard before, but you're not really sure what they mean, or you think you know what they mean. Circle them. That's step two, is going through and circling any words that are unfamiliar to you or that you're not 100% sure you know. So let's see. I'm going to say... Genome? I don't know what a genome is. I actually do, but you may not, and that's okay. And there may be, you know, one person may have three words in the paragraph they don't know. One person may have ten. It's okay. You can't read a paragraph unless you know the words in it. And just skipping the words when you don't know them doesn't do you any good. So, okay. Genome. Woo! Plasmids. Confer. Okay. Okay. Those are the three that I'm definitely going to want to look up. I've listed over on the side the words that I'm going to look up, and I'm literally going to go to a dictionary now. What? So I'm going to go to Merriam-Webster's. You can do the same. So I did do, I did a compromise here where I took a photo, a, a screenshot of the definition of Merriam-Webster's. I trimmed the photo down and I'm sticking it in there. Now it has to be something that I can read when I go back and reread this, but with Doceri I can zoom in if I need to to read it. Um, so I can make that bigger or smaller, but I just want to make sure that I have that definition. And you know, you'll you'll reference back to it periodically. So let's go go ahead and look up plasmid and confer. And if there are any other words in that first paragraph that you're uncertain about, look them up too. Plasmids. Okay, so I got a definition for plasmid. Now, you know, here's a problem that comes up sometimes when reading science articles. Sometimes the definition itself has words in it that you don't know. Um, extra chromosomal uh, extra chromosomal ring of DNA, especially a bacteria that replicates autonomously, huh? Does that make sense? Do we know what a chromosome is yet? No. Um, what does autonomous mean? You might actually have heard something about autonomous. I don't know. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shrink that one down. And what about confer? So confer had two definitions. OK. Confer, to compare views or take counsel to bestow as if from a position of authority, or to give something to someone, to give a property or characteristic to something. Okay, so let's think about those in context. Antibiotic resistant, so now that I have looked up my words, whoops, let me go back and check what's my next step. Well, my next step is to go back and reread the paragraph and underline the main idea. So now that I kind of know what those words mean, I can understand the paragraph better. I'm going to re-shrink that. Antibiotic-resistant organisms can be found in multiple locations in a hospital, 
on countertops and doorknobs, on computers and in sinks, and even inside the plumbing. To better understand how these organisms spread, investigators at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, recently collected samples from pipes beneath the hospital's intensive care unit and from outside manholes draining hospital wastewater. They conducted whole genome analysis. So wait, what did genome mean again? Genome meant the genetic material of an organism. Oh, okay, they looked at its genetic material. When, when I read through that and I use the definition for genome, okay, they conducted an analysis, a whole genome analysis. Oh, they conducted an analysis of its genetic material. Okay, well, that makes sense. So then I can set that aside. I kind of like having these little screenshots. This works. Genetic genome analysis on the samples to study bacterial plasmids. Wait, what's a plasmid? An extra chromosomal ring of DNA, especially a bacteria that replicates autonomous. Okay, so a plasmid is a piece of DNA. I get that. I, I don't really know what extra chromosomal means yet. So I'm actually going to kind of make a note to myself that there's one word in there I'm not sure of. But I know it's a ring of DNA. Okay. Does that fit with the context of the article? Conducted a whole genetic analysis on the samples to study bacterial plasmids, rings of DNA. Oh, or rings of DNA. They said that. Okay, I'm good. <coughs> that can confer resistance to antibiotics. Now, for confer, we had two definitions. So let's, let's look back and read that sentence with each definition. Rings of DNA that can compare views or take counsel with bacteria? No, that's clearly not the right definition. Um, rings, of rings of DNA that can give resistance to antibiotics to bacteria? Yeah, absolutely. So if, if there's more than one definition and you, you get back to annotating and you realize, <laughs> My definition doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, you need to go back and find the other definition. So, okay, confer, to give something. So then, based on that, I can actually start to look at getting the main idea and then summarizing. So I'm going to put stick that up there. So to underline my main idea, I picked some color little tougher. This is sort of an intro paragraph. What is the big idea in this paragraph? Stuff. So once I've kind of identified the main idea, I'm going to summarize it for myself. And your summary may look slightly different from somebody else's summary. Um, but I'm going to summarize the main idea of this paragraph like this. That's, that's how I would sum that up. NIH is looking for resistant bacteria in the plumbing. Now, we want to make connections. So this one is kind of easy for us because we actually saw an entire um, special that dealt largely with this. So there are a couple different kinds of connections that you could have. Um, connection, that, why is that an 8? That should be a 2. Text to text. I don't know, I need to edit that clearly. Sorry about that, folks. T8T, it would be T2T. Duh. So, we haven't read a whole lot of this article yet. This is not a long article. We've read exactly one paragraph so far. So we're not going to have any text-to-text -text connections yet. However, text-to-self. Maybe you know something about resistant bacteria. Oh, I know one. I've got one for me. So T2S, text-to-self. Um, resistant bacteria like on the dog. Did I mention to you that my very old, very sweet, very smelly old lab had an antibiotic resistant bacterial and skin, and skin infection for the last four years of her life? It was pretty horrible. I'll tell you about it some other time. 
Um, so, okay, that's a text to self connection. Oh, a resistant bacterial infection like on the dog. Do we have any text to another text or text to world connections? So it's not really a text, but we seem to have watched a movie about antibiotic resistant bacteria in the National Institutes of Health. Huh, guess what they're talking about? Same thing. So I'm going to do text to, you know, something else, text to another text. Um, like in Nightmare. Like in Nightmare Bacteria. NIH. NIH ICU. This is the same place that we saw in the film. Okay, so that gets us through a first paragraph. Holy cow. I'm going to flip screens and I'm going to go to the next chunk of text. Now this is where I want to talk a little bit about, obviously, that first page was kind of an intro paragraph. Here, I have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs. Do I have to do a summary for each of those paragraphs? Not necessarily. In some cases, after I pre-read it, I may say, oh, well, you know what, these two paragraphs are really a reasonable chunk, and these two paragraphs are really a reasonable chunk, and these two paragraphs are really a reasonable chunk. Actually, I think what I'm going to do, because I think this one's on the next slide as well, I think I'm going to break this into two pieces. These paragraphs as one chunk, and those paragraphs as another. You can break it up a different way if you want, but you know, very often the paragraphs are pretty small, so we don't have to be crazy picky about paragraph by paragraph. We can do slightly larger chunks. Okay? So go ahead and pre-read those first couple paragraphs um, to yourself, and then start circling the words that you feel like you need to look up. Okay, so I, I circled a bunch of words, and I want to zoom in on the word... Um, Carbapenems. So it's a word that in my first read through I said, I don't know what that means, but then as somebody pointed out, hey, they tell you what it is in the next sentence. So you know, that's one where you might be able to just not circle it, but you kind of circle it in the next sentence and then put a little arrow that shows you. It's really hard to see. I, I zoomed way in on mine. Let me mention this also. I am okay with you working on an article with a partner. If you're working on an article with a partner, do both of you have to look up each of these words? No, you look up half, I look up half, we airdrop one another the pictures. That's okay. Because you're going to talk then about what the word means. Hey, did you get uptick? Yeah, can you airdrop me the picture? Okay, I'm reading the definition. Here's what I think it means. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. Good, moving on. There, there's another neurological connection aside from the hand-brain connection. There's a social connection, and we'll talk about that later. So I'm going to go look up some words and screenshot them. I'm going I'm to pop in some definitions. I got pathogens, resilient, reservoir, flourish. So when we're doing science text, sometimes you will hit something that's a word you don't know, but if you look it up, you find out, oh, that's the name of a species. Then you just write over to the side for definitions, name of a species, and it might be, you know, a species of bacteria, a species of mammal, a species of plant, because that reminds you that when you're reading that, oh, I'm talking about an organism here, you know, I don't know what the common name is, if it's something that has a common name, you know, if you ran across Procyon Lotor in an article, you might want to write over in your definitions, raccoon. Okay, because that's what Procyon Loader is. But um, there are no raccoons in this story, I promise. So, yeah, that's a good question. The other one, so I've, I've put in a few of my words. I want to talk about things like lateral gene transfer. Oh, okay. That may be, that's a really technical biological term. And that, did anybody find that yet in Merriam-Webster's? You did? Do they actually give the definition for lateral gene transfer? Amazing. Sometimes when you have a word that's a very specific technical term, it won't be 
in Merriam-Webster's and you'll have to go to another source. And we'll talk about those as we come across them. I'm happy to hear they have that. Yes. Um, okay, so lateral gene transfer, amazingly enough, was actually in Merriam-Webster's. But i got to say, the definition is a little, well, it's a little funky. So it, talks, it's a, it basically refers you back to horizontal gene transfer. It says, the reason for this breakdown is a process called lateral gene transfer in which organisms acquire genes not from their parents, but by picking up stray chunks of DNA from organisms in their environment. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Okay. So, once you've looked at those definitions, you're going to go in and try to get a main idea for yourself. I'm going to pause this while I zoom in. Well, I, I really do see a couple main ideas, and... I, I would say that, you know, first of all, in, in both of those paragraphs, main idea being that there are actually communities of bacteria living underneath hospitals. Ew. I'm, I'm going to underline that. In this case, what I feel like is the main idea isn't just like a single sentence, but it's ideas out of a couple sentences that, hey, there are antibiotic-resistant microbes in the sewers, and there's a complex bacterial community down there. And in addition, 